Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do correlation analysis in SPSS. What you're going to find in SPSS is that it provides you with more than one choice of correlation. So there is a question there about which one do I use and when. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to some examples. An example where you use Pearson correlation. An example where we use what's called a Spearman or Kendall's tau B. I'm going to wrap up things by looking at the correlation matrix. Looking at the first data set, we've got two variables here, height and weight. Okay, so the question here we might want to know is like, if one of the variables go up, what happens to the other one? Does it tend to go up or down? Uh, in this context, if um, someone is taller, does that mean they tend to be heavier or, or, or lighter? Um, we'd expect that tall somebody is, probably the weight will tend to go up as well. And that's what we say, we say that there's a positive correlation. If it's a negative correlation, it means as one thing goes up, the other one tends to go the opposite way, it goes down. So in this case, as if one of them, say, weight goes up, the other one, say, well, that height goes down. Alternative, we can say that as height goes up, weight goes down. Or weight goes up, height goes down. Same thing. Alright, so how to do correlation? You go to Analyze, Correlate. Got, see if there's just choice of three things here. What we want is this thing called bivariate. Because bivariate means two variables. So correlation, basic correlation here, we're looking at correlate, we're looking at relation between two variables. We click on it, I want to draw your eyes down to here. Where it says correlation coefficient, you see there's checkbox three things Pearson, Kendall's Tau, Spearman by default Spearman, Pearson is chosen. If you've done the first course in stats Pearson's correlation coefficient is the one you're most likely to be introduced to. Okay but there are another two so whichever one we use it will produce a number for our two variables which lies between minus 1 to plus 1 inclusive. Now, if your number is closer to either extreme, minus 1 or plus 1, it means stronger the relationship. If it's closer to negative 1, it means there's a strong negative relationship, whatever that means, relationship means. If it's closer to positive 1, it means the stronger the positive relationship positive correlation between the two variables. If it's zero, i.e. midway between minus one and plus one, means there is no correlation between these two variables. Okay, so that's like the interpretation. Now, what we want to do is to just determine whether you use Pearson's Kendall's or Spearman is look at the nature of the variables. Here we've got height and weight, they are both continuous. We're going to also assume that they are normal, they're distributed, or approximately normal. We're also going to assume there are no outliers in this data set. Now if we can assume these two things, which I am doing, Pearson is the right one to use. Okay. If these conditions do not satisfy, that's when we're looking at these other two guys. So what I've just taught you there, that is important. In other words, Pearson, you don't run it on any old data set. If you've done a survey, you've done a questionnaire, doesn't, and you want to do correlation, you don't use Pearson because your data isn't likely to be normally distributed. In fact, it won't even be scale, most likely, yeah, if you're ticking boxes on a questionnaire. Okay, so coming back to this, I've just reasoned why we, uh, Pearson is appropriate here. So we check these two, take them over to the variables box. As uh, newbies, we can forget these two option things. Um, leave, leave everything else. Okay. Output comes on another window. We'll get is a box. All right. What you see here is that you've got some labeling on around the edges. What we want are the figures and the figures are here in this, these four cells. The way you want to look at it is like this. You can see the ones along the diagonal here. Alright, 
the stuff we're interested in is above or below the diagonal. What you see that the number above the diagonal is 0.78 here is the same as down there. That's because it's like a mirror image of each other. So when you're looking at correlation you just need to look off the diagonal either above or below. Okay, now we've got to think of lines of intersection here. So we've got the variables height and weight here. If we go height and we run along and we run down from this second, uh, well, this, okay, this, this column here and run down, that's how you get this bigger, 0.78. And that tells us that's the correlation between with a weight and height. Correlation between weight and height. Correlation between height and weight. It's positive, right? So it's... Uh, that's what we expect. That is, as one goes up, the other one tends to go up. It's also on a scale of, uh, you know, if we're looking here on the positive scale from zero to one, it's it's more than halfway towards one. So you could say it's quite strong positive correlation here between weight and height. But is it significant from zero? Because this figure of 0.78 is just from a sample. So what does this infer about? from the population and this is where you do a test and it's done a test for you. So is it significantly different from zero this correlation? We want it, the answer to be yes otherwise this uh, correlation will be meaningless. It's got two stars now it's done the, it's done the interpretation for you here so two stars it says that correlation is significant at 0 0.01 level times it by 100 that's 1% level. So this test is this um, its correlation is significant at the 1% level. Alpha is 1% based on a two-tailed test. So we're happy with that. There is a um, there's evidence here of evidence between uh, positive correlation between height and weight. Okay, and um, just to fill in the gaps of what these figures are here, it's not point not not not. It's that's the actual significance. It's the p-value, sorry, the p-value, the small significance value, which is can reject this null. It's the p-value. The p-value here is basically that's why you can reject it at one percent because it's not point not 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 even less than one percent. Uh, sample size here n twenty. In other words, if I go here and run down here, there's twenty observations. Okay, that's Pearson's. That's my first example. So my data set are approximately normally distributed or are normal, no outliers. Now let's look at a case where we can we use Spearman or Kendall to tau B. For that, let's look at another data set. Okay, so what I've got here is a questionnaire taken uh, from McDonald's. You can see it's totally different to the data set we just looked at. So here is the code, all right? Um, so this questionnaire, the responses are more like tick boxes. Let's look at the, let's say we're interested in correlation between the two variables, food and visit. Food and visit, let's see what it means by going to the variable view. Food and visit, so visit is how often do you come to this McDonald's and you can see it's coded very often, often sometimes rarely. Making this not continuous, I not scale, and making it categorical and because there's a ranking here from frequency of visit makes it ordinal. The other one, food. The food at this McDonald's is tasty. Okay, again, it's a check box type of response. It's a Likert scale. It's a, it's a measurement of attitude. Something strongly disagree here all the way through to strongly agree. So it's a this is a Likert scale. Um, now. Uh, if I can just say something on the side here, not important, um, too, example, too important for this example anyway, is um, let's just say that these two are, um, yeah, so these two are clearly categorical and ordinal, and that's all we need to know. Our results, however, won't, uh, won't be as we expect because these are reverse, one of them has been reverse coded, but we'll forget I've just said that. Okay, so clearly we can't use Pearson here because they are not neither they um, they are not uh, normally distributed. What we can use here is Kendall or Pearson, Spearman, sorry. So we've got analyze, correlate, 
bivariate. Take food and visit to the side, which I've already done. What we should check along here is that Pearson's unchecked, and then we can tick one or more of these two guys here. Uh, and of course, in statistics, um, so Pearson's tends to be the one that's taught basic level. If you're doing question analysis, then Spearman, um, that's another, that, that, that's taught, that's a popular one as well. Um, Kendall, mm, that's a much more of a rarity. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, although there's uh, stuff going for it over Spearman. But, you know, this is what you're taught, so if you're taught Spearman, do Spearman. We're going to click OK. OK, so you can see one block here, repeated below here. This block here is just for Kendall's Tau, and it's repeated below, but done for Spearman's row. Let's do Spearman's row first, that's because it's more often taught. So, we can say here that um, it's the same setup. We've got the diagonal of ones here, we just need to look above or below. Let's look above for consistency. Alright, so how often do you come to this McDonald's? And this food at this McDonald's is tasty. Here, there is a negative correlation, and it's more close to zero than is negative one, so you could say it's a moderate negative correlation. Got two stars above it. Uh, in this case, two stars means that correlation is significant at the one percent level. Okay, so it's significantly different from zero. If you didn't want to use the two stars, you just look at the value below it, which is the p-value, report that. Well, it's tiny, not point not not not. All right. How about Kendall's? Same setup here. So we're just going to look here, down here. You can see the figure here is minus 0 0.267, similar value. So it's moderate negative correlation. Two stars signifying here uh, significance at the one percent level. Okay, so we've got we've just kind of described the conditions under which uh, Pearson, Spearman, Kendall's can be used. The interpretation of the correlation is also slight of the numbers is slightly different as well. So this is another point I want to make, boring as it might seem. Pearson's, if we go back to Pearson's, measures the strength of linear relationship between two variables. The important word here is linear. Okay, that's straight line. So in other words, when you plot these two things on a scatter plot, can you draw a straight line through all the points. If you can, and the, the slope is positive, that's when we say there's a perfect positive correlation between the two variables. The line goes through all the points. Perfect mathematical relationship there. If it's negative 1, and we're using Pearson, it means there's a perfect negative correlation. In other words, if we did a scatter plot, our line would be negative slope and we'll go through all the dots. That's perfect. That's a perfect mathematical relationship as well. Okay, so no uncertainty, no randomness whatsoever. That's plus and minus one for Pearson. For Kendall's Tau Spearman's row, it's slightly different in terms of the interpretation. It's still about the idea of one variable goes up, does the other variable tend to go up or down? But it's no longer about linear. Um, it's it's slightly looser because uh, they are measuring the strength of like monotonic relationship. Um, so I don't really want to tell you what monotonic means. I want to give you an example. So if one variable goes up, then the other variable goes up, and then at some other point, if the variable goes up and the other variable goes down, I, the relationship changes from positive to negative. That is not monotonic. Monotonic means goes up in one direction only, or stays at the same level. Okay, so either goes up and up and up, or up and sometimes stays the same level. When something goes up, the other one doesn't change, and then up again. But not up, and then later on, if one goes up, the other one goes down. That's not monotonic. Okay. Um, so that's that's the difference between the two. So we talked about the conditions under which Pearson is relevant, and we've said that you know Pearson is some the, the first one you're taught at uh, a college, and then you might be taught Spearman's, and then especially if you do questionnaires and surveys, you'll be taught Spearman's. 
Um, not so much Kendall, but there are things going for Kendall, so report that as well if you prefer uh, to, to Spearman's. And um, we talked about the conditions then under which they are applicable. So Pearson is when your two variables are approximately normal or normal, and then no outliers. Okay. If they're out outliers, go for Spearman or Kendall. Finally, that brings me then to example three, correlation matrix. Right, so in a real data set, we're going to have more than two variables, right? So let's look at something here. We've got three variables. Education data set, earnings, years of experience, years of schooling. So if I wanted to look at the correlation between each of these variables, I'd look at earnings versus experience, earnings versus schooling, experience earning schooling so I'd run it three times the way I've shown you only that doesn't have to be so we can run it once as follows analyze correlate bivariate this time instead of having the two there two variables shifting the two variables over will shift the whole lot over okay we note that they've got rulers these are not look like worms but the rulers signify this when the person set this data set up these are scale variables scale we're going to assume the normal distribution we're going to assume there's no outliers so we're going to use Pearson and I'm going to go OK what we're going to get here is a bigger table and it looks like this so before we had four cells didn't we right uh, this time we've got one two three by three so three, six, nine cells to interpret. Only we don't have to interpret all because as we said, look at the diagonal here of ones. We only need to look above or below. Let's look above. Okay. What's the correlation between earnings and experience? It's 0.217. What's its p-value? 0.178. Is it significant? Well, there's no star on it whatsoever. So it's not significant even at the 5% level. So it's not sticking from zero. In other words, there's nothing there. Next, earnings, schooling. The correlation is 0.319, or is it 0.32? Is it significant? Well, the p-value is 0.045. It's got one star, and it's done the interpretation for us if we don't know how to interpret the p-value. The one star tells us that the correlation is significant at the 5% level, based on the two-tailed test. Okay, so this is where we kind of say hooray if that's what we're looking for. Finally, how about experience and schooling? Experience, schooling. Minus 0.364, that's a moderate negative correlation. It's got p-value of 0 0.021. If we don't want to interpret the p-value, we'll look at the star. The star tells us its correlation is significant at the 5% level. And again, we'll go hooray if we're looking for an effect. So that completes the interpretation of all these cells, those three cells above that diagonal. And those numbers are reflected below, so I don't have to bother to interpret the cells below. That figure is the same as that. This is the same as this. This is the same as this, you see. Okay. So a correlation where I do, uh, where I set it up so we run more than, we get more than a um, two by two cell. This here, we've got a three by three cell. We call this a correlation matrix. So it's where we've got all the correlations compiled together in the table. I'll uh, we'll call that correlation matrix. So I've gone through these points here. And um, just to say then, yeah, uh, when you're watching these videos um, that people make on YouTube or in your lesson, uh, they might just look at Pearson, but note that doesn't mean that Pearson is applicable to your case. Depends on the type of data you've got. Specifically, are they normal? Or are they kind of ordinal? Okay. No, I've not said anything about nominal, categorical nominal data, because none of these methods would apply. A question you might also ask is, um, okay, how about if one variable is normal and the other one is uh, ordinal? Can I use uh, Pearson? The answer is no. Okay, because um, Pearson, both of them have to be approximately normal. Okay, so I hope that's helped. Any questions, just kind of list them on the, on the, on the YouTube and um, I might get around to answering them in another video if there are loads and loads of questions on this.
Alright, good luck guys. Have fun.